And item 73 is to approve, adopt, and authorize the chairman to sign a resolution opposing the indefinite detention provisions of the National Defense Authorization Act and take any action deemed appropriate. Okay. <clears throat> item number 73. I'm going to call on, uh, ask Ms. Lee to come forward first. I have got a stack of cards here, probably an inch thick. Uh, there is a lot of support on the board for this resolution, I think, right now, but you're going to speak. I ask you to please not repeat the speaker in front of you over and over again so we hear the same thing 30 times. It won't benefit anyone. And with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Lee. And I have to say we commend you for your passion and perseverance on this issue. The first meeting you came, I think you were alone, and now you have this many people here with you, so. I thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon. Yes, we've all built this lovely relationship over a time. And uh, I appreciate the indulgence. Uh, and um, it's a beautiful thing. I feel really good today. Um, of, on behalf of uh, Terry Cottle, the owner of the Four Queens and Binions, um, he gave me permission to speak on his behalf today because he was unable to cancel his previous engagement to be here. And... Uh, 37 other businesses and professionals I would like to submit for record support um, from local businesses, casinos, bars, doctors, and lawyers, and also a petition that was signed by uh, over 100 people who also, if they could not be here, wanted to make sure that you guys knew how strongly this community feels about this resolution. So, in, um, since you guys have heard me speak so many times, again, I just wanted to thank you all for those who uh, plan on supporting us here today. Um, I'm actually going to be interviewed by the Washington Times on this. It's garnering national attention. And so many people feel strongly about this all over the country, and that's why we, if we pass this, are joining um, 26 other cities and counties. And um, currently, the state of Michigan, their anti-NDAA bill is sitting on their governor's desk waiting, awaiting um, his signature. So this is something that is gaining large accolades and large steam across the country because there's a line in the sand that's been crossed here and as much as we all want to keep our country safe and we feel very strongly about that, we all recognize there's certain principles and liberties we need to strictly adhere to um, in order to keep the rule of law in construction. So thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for your support. And I look forward to being a proud, homegrown Las Vegas woman um, in, in County My City as one that is taking a stand for civil liberties. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. If I could ask you to, those that are going to speak, please line up along the rail and take one microphone after another. Good afternoon. I'm really happy to say I got lunch today before we spoke. Um, I only have one thing to say because I trust a lot of you that you've listened to us and done your own research. But I wanted to remind other people that aren't aware of this that the detaining of our citizens did happen at one time. And that's years ago in 1942 where we detained 110,000 American Japanese. No charges or anything. They were held for almost four years. Many were born in the USA. Many served in our military. And so don't believe it can't happen again. But at least with you passing this, you're going to feel safe in our county, and hopefully we will go on to pass it in our state too. Thank you. Thank you. I asked, did you identify yourself for the record? Oh, Shirley Shelton. Thank you, Shirley. <laughs> Uh, I'm Jim Salee. Um, I'm 75 now and I've lived in Clark County for 50 of those years. Uh, I'm currently in District C. I retired from the city of Henderson after 29 years service as the right-of-way agent. And I have watched our freedoms being drained away like the lake water in Lake Mead. And I, um, I, I want to tell you that our government has become more of an administrative government than an elected government. All of the uh, administrative people in Washington are making the rules and regulations that have the effect of law. And you, the elected officials, the county commissioners, the sheriffs, are the only defense that the public has between them and us. And uh, 
I execute and freedom and to adopt this resolution. And like the previous speaker earlier today said he wanted to save the tortoises for his grandchildren, I want to save freedom for my grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I ask you to please refrain from applause or any cat calls because we've got obviously a long line to get through. I want to be respectful to all the speakers. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. I'll keep this uh, pretty short and sweet, uh, but I'm here today to defend exactly. You need to identify yourself, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Whistler Rizard. I go Thank by you. Wiz. But I'm here to defend exactly what everyone in this room is here to defend. It's freedom and the National Defense Authorization Act, the provisions 1021, 1022, objects to our Constitution. Remember, our Constitution does not give us rights. It's just merely a document that protects already the natural rights that we come into this world with. And as elected officials, you, you are elected here to uphold and defend it. Um, at one point, there was the Fugitive Slave Act, an act that pretty much said that it was okay to detain African Americans or any slave and keep them detained on a plantation for as long as however the person wanted. That's no different than what this authorization, act, this Defense Authorization Act does. But as we as individuals here in the United States, we know that although laws are passed, it is morally our obligation to restrict it to the Constitution in which our Founding Fathers has drafted to bring us together to be called the United States of America. So I ask you not to vote for this for my being, but I ask you to vote for this for the posterity of this generation to come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name is Nick Lyon. I'm a pharmacist by profession. I served as a captain in the United States Air Force, and I'm interested in conserving the U.S. Constitution. I'm not affiliated with PANDA, but the NDAA has a flaw in Section 1021 and 1022, as many are aware of, indefinite detention, no due process of the law, rendition to foreign territories, and possible tribunals by mil uh, military tribunals. It's our local and state obligations to protect public safety. And this act, this resolution, is the first step in protecting public safety. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Bragg, are you still with me? I need to confirm I've got yes. a quorum. I am, I am on part of the quorum. Okay, and I'm going to, after the speaker, I'm going to have to make an announcement, so go ahead. Okay. In continuing public safety, it's our obligation, our duty to protect public safety by not cooperating with federalized Department of Homeland Security, militarized police forces, and to allow this, the office of the sheriff to do their job in our state, our cities, our counties. I would say in the future to even augment, amend such position with interposing tasks that fed, federal agents initiate that aren't in the public interest and interfere or harm the people. There are many facets right now in our society that people are un very unpopular. We have listening devices on lamp lampposts, retinal thermal image scanning, uh, the NSA spying on us. This is very alarming. I'm a pharmacist and I'm very in touch with the people because I talk to them daily every time I work. <clears throat> so this is a big concern for all of us. So I will just say that in closing, I see the economy really hurting people and they feel threatened and offering federal FEMA, federalized police is not the answer for a crisis that some people say is threatening us. So when there's unjustly rich and unjustly poor and the middle class goes extinct, there are going to only be two classes of people that are remembered. There's going to be Americans and traitors. So I urge all Americans to stand and not allow the U.S. Constitution to be overturned, diluted, and used against us. Thank you. I'm going to interrupt the public comment right now. This is not a public hearing. I'm just taking public comment on this. I'm going to lose a quorum here very quickly. I've got a commissioner on the phone. This issue was so important that she called in, even though she's not feeling well, because she wanted to be able to cast a vote on this issue. So if I've got, well, I still have 
a quorum. Okay, I were, uh, trying to get my quorum back together. I want to make sure I take a vote before I lose a quorum so that we can take action on this. So I'll come back to the public comment. We're going to take everybody's comment. But being that said, do I have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I would move approval of uh, the item as presented, item 73, uh, the NDAA Act, and uh, put it on the record where the county stands. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion before I proceed with continuing with the public comment? Seeing none, I ask the commissioners to please cast their vote. Commissioner Bragger? I'm in favor, aye. Please record Commissioner Bragger as an aye vote. And thanks. I'm going to hang up. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you for being with us today. Okay. Okay, that's the only clapping I'm going to allow because the motion passes. <laughs> motion passes. Now we will continue with the comments. That being said, since it passed, anybody can decide to do whatever they want to do. Yes, sir. Can I put a graph here? I just want to, just for the people at home, my name is Robert Andrew, I'm a Las Vegas resident. Thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for doing the right thing today. This is a greatly important issue and this is habeas corpus. The United States of America was built upon the habeas corpus being violated by the English was one of the founding principles of the United States and without habeas corpus, without our right to trial, that's our foundation of our country and without a foundation we can crumble. So thank you guys so much. This is how we do it and that's how we can get it to the state level. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Okay, to be respectful to all the speakers, if you could please hold the comments down or out in the hall, the ones that aren't speaking and allowed to speak. Thank you very much. Chris and congratulations, Ms. Lee. Chris Harold again. I'd like to thank the board for making a sound decision in the interest of the people. And I want to tell you how important this is to the economy of Las Vegas, because if we have TSA agents sitting up down sexually molesting people to get into uh, Fremont Street or anywhere on the Strip, it will greatly have a disaffecting income revenue stream for Las Vegas and will suffer even more than we are now. And besides that, they're doing the same thing at the airports is gravely affecting the traveling to Las Vegas as a destination tourist stop because of having to be groped by these maniacs at the TSA. Further, there was a great victory for the people yesterday. Mr. Toby, who was the one who pulled his shirt off and had the Fourth Amendment on his chest and was unlawfully arrested and held hostage uh, by the TSA, Miss Janet Napolitano and John Pistoli were found guilty, and the two arresting officers were adjudicated to pay $250,000 apiece plus attorney fees and cost for violating the civil rights of Mr. Toby. And that would be a watchword to all Americans. They should hold their public servants accountable in the courts of justice and hopefully bring back and cessate the atrocities of this continual war against the people to cessate the occupation and the militarization and martial law state that has been evoked since General Order 100 by Abraham Springsteen, a.k.a. Lincoln. The truth of America is much less than what people believe, and there's a whole different version out there for those who do their due diligence. But I thank this board this day for this vote and my hat's off to you for doing something conscionable to protect the people in some elemental form, and to you, too, especially Larry Brown. Thank you, sir. I want to thank you for... Uh, Could you please pass identify yourself? I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I am Faith Cave, daughter of Chris Cave. Um, and I want to thank you guys for passing it um, for the people. Uh, thank you. And I also want to thank you guys for letting me speak up here without the worry of being detained. And thank you. Thank you very much. Chairman Sisolak, Commissioners, thank you so much. Cindy Lake, Henderson, Nevada. Um, I have my constitution. I carry it everywhere. If anybody would like one, I have an extra copy in the car. I thank you so much for passing this resolution. And I hope that you all went home and, and looked into it and that what led you to your decision. Um, I wanted to clarify uh, that there were no legal repercussions um, as to who the resolution is going. I'm not sure whether it's exactly the same as the city's version. Could you clarify that for us? 
It is exactly the same as Miller. Good. It is. Okay. So we just want to be sure that it's a joint resolution. Exactly. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and all that. We appreciate you greatly. Thank you very much. Don Devine, for the record. Um, I don't have my, my uh, no. prompter with me, so, yeah. so uh, I, forgive me if I'm not as intelligible as I typically am. Um, I want to thank you all for your courage in standing up for liberty today. Um, you go down in history as heroes. Thank you very much. Don Devine, for the record. Um, I don't have my, my uh, no. prompter with me, so, yeah. so uh, I, forgive me if I'm not as intelligible as I typically am. Um, I want to thank you all for your courage in standing up for liberty today. Um, you go down in history as heroes. Thank you, sir. Hello, I'm Tom Jones. I'm the uh, Clark County Chairman of the Independent American Party. And I just want to thank everybody for uh, passing that resolution. And uh, uh, I believe that this is a great day for Nevada. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Tasha Heath, um, I just wanted to say thank you for up upholding your oaths and abiding by the Constitution today. Um, you have shown that on this vote, you are a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I'm Jason uh, Nellis. Uh, thank you very much for this vote. I was going to say before the vote that uh, a yes vote would show that you are upholding Constitution on our side, on the people's side, and standing up for liberty, which country was built on. Um, and obviously, there have been many tyrannical moves and laws set forth the last few years. I've been exposed to public, and you know they, they've been um, having a, a stigmatized or. Um, you know, talked about as conspiracy theories and all that, but I think this is themes such as the NSA surveillance is showing that it's not just crackpot conspiracy theories anymore, and that this is a definitely a step in the right dir direction. It's you know a small battle. Well, it's been a long battle, but a small one and a first very good step in the right direction. And thank you very much for standing up for our liberty. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, commissioners, my name is Mitch Rakovan, and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, in light of this recent vote, I just wanted to echo the general sentiments of everyone else and thank you for taking a stand and uh, showing that you support your constituents in your community and showing that you're not just a rubber stamp for Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate being here. I want to thank all. Anybody else wishing to speak? I want to thank all the speakers, and I, I please, I hope you understand, and I apologize. We needed to take a vote before I lost my quorum, since I don't, only have four left right now, and I want to make sure I know how important this was to all of you. We all do. Commissioner Brager was sick. Uh, Commissioner Weekly had an un un uh, event he had to attend. So uh, we appreciate you being here, and I hope you accept my apology for taking the vote before we finish the public comment. That being said, the motion passed. Mr. Burnett, give it back to you. And that concludes your agenda. That concludes our agenda. This time <clears throat> is our second time of public comment. Anyone wishing to address the board on any item, please step forward, identify yourself for the record. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Ms. Lee, were you? You're welcome. <laughs>